What is up guys, it's your boy Brave Cacus, and today the Destiny 2 Into the Light free DLC has just gone live, and with it comes the Brave Arsenal, 12 fan favorite weapons from across Destiny's history. However, in this first week, 6 of the Brave Arsenal weapons are available, so in this video we're going to be going over which ones are the best? Which ones should you go after? Which ones should you complete the quests for first? And which ones should you attune? And so, let's get started. Now, in the introductory quest that you're going to get with Into the Light, it's going to take you to talk to Shax, you're going to have to do a little bit of the Onslaught game mode, and then you're going to be presented with this screen here on the Arsite vendor. And it is going to be six main quests to actually acquire these Brave Arsenal weapons. Now, originally, it is going to force you to do the quest for the Elsie's rifle. And all of these quests have the same method of completion. It, there's actually two different alternate pathways to completing it. Uh, for the Elsie's rifle, you can defeat combatants with precision uh, damage using pulse rifles anywhere in the system, bonus progress and onslaught, or you can defeat combatants in Vanguard Ops playlist activities using pulse rifles and you get bonus progress for higher difficulty nightfalls. And guys, all of these weapon quests are gonna behave similarly. For the Secession Snipe Rifle, it's get precision final blows anywhere in the system or you use it specifically in Onslaught and then you just get sniper kills. It doesn't care if it's precision. For the Edge Transit Grenade Launcher, you have to get rapid heavy grenade final blows anywhere or just grenade kills in general in a certain activity. And frankly, no matter which quest it was, the fastest way to complete it was to go to Shiro Chi within the Last Wish raid and absolutely cheese the objective that let you get kills anywhere on the Shadow Thrall here. Now, yes, you can complete these quests while playing Onslaught. That's exactly what I did with SMGs and the Recluse quest, but my goodness, it took a while. So even though you can actually accept all all of these weapon quests at the same time, you definitely want to prioritize certain ones. And so how should you pick which ones to prioritize? Well, it's based on the two rewards you get for completing these quests. So the first reward is going to be a special curated role of the shiny version of that particular weapon. So obviously we're going to judge which curated role is best, which one do you want to get first, which one are you most likely to actually use, right? And the second thing you get is the ability to attune these weapons. And when you have a weapon attuned, you will significantly increase the drop rates for that particular weapon. Now you won't only get that weapon, you'll just get that weapon a lot more often. So, based on those factors, let's start eliminating weapons. Which ones should you not prioritize? And the first one has got to be the Hung Jury. This is kind of the odd man out of the Brave Arsenal. Not too many people are excited for it. The curated role is just Enlightened Action plus Boxed Breathing. And Boxed Breathing was once good, and then it got nerfed, and now no one's using it. In terms of attuning it, it can actually get a very, very good role of Kinetic Tremors plus Explosive. I don't think we've ever seen that in the game before which is kind of crazy but the best scout rifle in the game is still kind of mediocre compared to some of the other weapons within the meta frankly now another weapon you should not prioritize is actually going to be uh, the LC's rifle. You, you are forced to do that first quest, so you are going to automatically uh, get that curated roll of rewind rounds plus adrenaline junkie, which is fine, and the LC's rifle can get some decent rolls, but nothing absolutely game-breaking or like incredibly just blatantly better than other pulse rifles in the game. But moving on from there, we get to the more powerful weapons of the bunch. And next on the list is maybe the Secession. Now I say maybe because this all depends on whether or not you own Beyond Light. If you don't, then the Secession with the Reconstruction plus Damage Increasing Perk roll is one of the best snipe rifle rolls in the entire game. I still use it to this day. It is unbelievable. But if you do own Beyond Light and you already have an OG Secession, this is not going to be that much better. And the curated roll is absolutely terrible. Lead from gold? 
who's using a succession with lead from gold, right? The whole point is that this is a sniper that can get reconstruction and then focus free is okay, but like what a terrible <laughs> curated role. Again, if you don't have the original version, however, could absolutely be worth going for and attuning so you can get that reconstruction role. After that, I would say uh, it's going to be the Falling Guillotine. Now, this sword is a little bit higher on the list, partially because the curated roll is actually one of the best. Unfortunately, it has Enduring Blade, which gives you more ammo at the cost of damage. Like, why would they ruin the roll with that? But aside from that, it actually gets Relentless Strikes plus Whirlwind Blade. So you're getting ammo back with consecutive hits and also massively increasing your damage. Relentless plus Whirlwind is a fan favorite classic roll, so you can get this and be pretty comfortable with like a decent vortex frame after that point. Now, in terms of attuning it, it can actually get some bonkers rolls. The Fallen Guillotine can actually get damage perks like Frenzy and Vorpal Weapon in the left column. So you can get Vorpal Weapon plus Whirlwind Blade for two damage perks on the same sword. I don't think we've ever seen that in the game before. So the damage is going to be way higher than any other Vortex frame in the game if you get a roll like that. However, Vortex frames as a whole are not the best for DPS. So you have the best of a sword archetype that isn't really seeing play. That's why it's a little bit lower on the list. Still probably worth going after in the long run. So that means the top two weapons in this first week are going to be between the Recluse and the Edge Transit. And I think it's very close, but I would say in second place, barely is going to be the Recluse. Now, let me explain because I know a lot of people are going to be gunning for the Recluse right away. The Recluse, its curated role is 100% better than the Edge Transit's curated role. You actually get Feeding Frenzy, right, to increase the reload, plus Master of Arms, the classic perk this weapon originally came with. Now, it has been nerfed a bit, but you get a kill with any weapon, including the Recluse. You increase the damage by 15%. Like, it's overall a very good curated roll that you're going to be able to use right away if you don't have a good SMG. And you can potentially attune this and get even better rolls. It can get the brand new Last Stand perk, uh, where you can get a weapon kill and then a grenade or melee kill to stack the damage even higher. And Bungie said you can actually get a higher damage eventually than Golden Tricorn, and Golden Tricorn does 50% more damage at times too. So you can also get um, subsistence and stuff. Like, you can get a lot of really good rolls for the Recluse guys. So why the heck am I saying it's in second place compared to the Edge Transit? Well, the Edge Transit, like I said, the curated roll does have Envious Assassin, which is insanely good, uh, but then it has Destabilizing Rounds, which you definitely don't want. However, the Edge Transit is, in my opinion, the most important weapon to attune right off the bat. And that's because the Edge Transit, with the right roll, is the new best heavy grenade launcher in the entire game and may even be the best overall DPS weapon now in the entire game, but you need an incredibly specific roll. And that's because the Edge Transit can actually get multiple god tier rolls. Like, it can get Field Prep in the left column. It can get Auto Loading Holster. It can get, again, Envious Assassin. And Envious Assassin can massively increase the magazine size. Combine that with Bait and Switch to increase the damage in the right column or even Explosive Light. And you're going to be doing, again, god tier DPS. But what makes this so interesting is that it can also get Cascade Point to increase the rate of fire. And if you get the special glowing version, you get double perks. And so that means you can actually get Envious Assassin and Cascade Point, which means you can boost your magazine size with Envious Assassin and then quickly activate Cascade Point before doing damage and your, you know, 15 or 20 round magazine is also now going to be shooting faster thanks to Cascade Point. And so if you do get lucky enough to get the special version with those two perks, you are going to be able to have a grenade launcher that is 
better than any other grenade launcher in the entire game in terms of DPS. And frankly, it's not even just that. If you get Envious plus uh, Field Prep, you can rally with Field Prep for more reserve ammo and then switch to Envious to increase the magazine size. So the value of having double perks for the Edge Transit, because you actually will like open your inventory and switch for Raid Boss DPS, is extremely high and that's why I have it like at number one you should attune the edge transit first because it's going to be very difficult to get this incredibly rare double perk roll so you're probably going to want it attuned for several weeks to actually be able to get that insane god roll but at the end of the day it's your decision i'm just here to help you make the most informed decision possible guys that's going to be it for the video hope you enjoyed and found this informative if you did please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video if you guys want to see more destiny 2 content similar to this don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. If you want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis that is linked in the description down below. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video and as always, have a good day.